All right. So welcome to AU Libraries Holistic Support for Student Success. I'm Sarah Gilchrist. I am a librarian with the School of International Service and School of Public Affairs, and I work with graduate students. Hello, I'm Shane Hickey. I'm the Resource Sharing and Discovery Services Manager at the library. And I am Clarissa Eisen. I am the Science Librarian here at AU. Cover all the sciences. Okay, today we're doing a couple different things. We started with introductions, but there's more members of our team that aren't up here today. So we're going to go through that again. First, we'll talk about the library's support services in a variety of different ways. First, starting with the library as a building and a space. Then we'll move to the library services. And finally, library materials. Ending with asking you for suggestions on what to improve or add in the future. So, introductions. We mentioned the three of us up here today. That is me, Clarissa Eisen. Shane Hickey and Sarah Gilchrist, but we also have two fantastic resident librarians, Natasha and Amelia, who if you went to the Student Success Summit a week ago, they were the ones presenting then. So thank you all the team. Okay, so first I wanted to ask people on chat and anyone in the room to ask their, or share their library experience. So raise your hand if you have used course reserves. Yay, I Yay. see hand raises. Yes. Watching the chat or Zoom. Okay, while you figure that out, raise your hand if you've used our group study rooms. No, that's a funky one. Raise yeah. your hand if you have gotten materials from interlibrary loan. Ooh, I, I get those too, <laughs> maybe too many. Um, raise your hand if you've visited the music library or our archives. Yeah. Something new to do. And there finally, oh, yay. And finally, raise your hand if you have borrowed technology or board games from the library. Oh, I've done board games. Clarissa. Okay, board great. Games. So we have on the screen the AU Library's mission, which is to provide information, tools, and expertise for the creation, discovery, I my eyes checked, and understanding that advocate advanced student achievement. Um, so I wanted to ask you, how have you interacted with the library? While we wait for people on chat, is anyone in the room? Maybe we'll just go through all three. Yeah. And we'll give you a, an option of which question do you want to answer about your library experience? How have you interacted with libraries? What do you like about the AU libraries? I love praise. Please praise us. <laughs> <laughs> and why is the library valuable to you? Any, anyone anyone want to share? that would like to share. I know we put you on, on I know. I'm kind of putting us on, sh on the spot. This is like when you have breakout rooms and you watch everyone leave. <laughs> Meredith likes the people in the library. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty great. <laughs> I like the people in the library, too. Yeah. We're super helpful for a variety of needs. Um, it's very accessible. It is. Resources. Lots Thank of you. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. The space in the library is very warm and welcoming. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a good space. The space is warm and welcoming. Right. Can you hear people in our audience? Online? We're all sitting close, so that helps. Okay, we'll move on. I'll put us out of our misery. <laughs> Let's talk about the library's building resources, starting with everyone. So anyone can use any of these resources. I'm speaking about the library as a physical space. So if you walk into the library from the beginning and we heard the first floor, we have this image here. You walk through the front doors. We have an information desk. That's the first desk you see on the left hand side. The information desk will handle anything about the physical space. So room reservations, if you're struggling with printing, um, events, things like that. If you move further into the library, on our right-hand side is the circulation desk. This is where you would check out any materials, course reserves, board games, books, things like that. 
Carrying on into the library, we have the Digital Research and Inquiry Lab. This is a new support service in the library. There'll be more events and promotion about this in September. Don't quote me on that. And then we have Tech Support Office all the way in the back of the library. So that's the first floor. If you went downstairs, we have the lower level maker space where you can 3D print, poster print, participate in a variety of crafts. The maker space is a lot of fun. We have the Simple Studio. There is a geospatial research lab where you can perform GIS research or participate in the office hours there. And then we have our librarian's offices. So if you're making an appointment with a librarian or if you are sending students there, that is where our offices are. I like to say, walk until you hit the back wall and then turn right. And that's where our offices are. Okay. And then we have the two upper levels, which I'll talk about in a second. So the library building resources for students. We have the reservable study rooms for group research. Must be more than two people or two people or more in there. There are library lockers and varying levels of noise. So I talked about the first floor and the lower level. If you went to the second floor, that's the quiet floor, and then or that's the si silent on the second, and third is quiet. So if you whisper on the second, the quiet floor, you will be stared at and shushed, but not, not on the third. Oh, I get shushed all the time. I'm very loud. <laughs> um, and then if you go to the lower level for students, we have the Graduate Resource Center, which is underground between SIS and the library. It's a cool tunnel. Students have to swipe in their IDs. Faculty don't get access to it. Um, so that's just for graduate students. Once again, those librarian offices, we're here for research appointments. And then printers. Students ask about printers all the time. You have printers in your offices. You can use ours too, but students ask a lot about printers. So those are all in the lower level. Okay. And then, I think am I that's missing something? That's it. Those that's are it. just it's on my turn. You. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to talk about some library services for everyone. This is not an exhaustive list of what the library provides, but some things that you or your students may want to be aware of, you know, the first couple weeks of classes. Uh, first is course reserve support. Uh, course reserves are, is the team at the library that works with faculty to make thousands of titles available every semester to your students through Canvas. Um, you can submit those course reserve requests directly through the course page in Canvas. It's very easy to do. Um, books, book chapters, articles, streaming videos, more can all be placed on course reserves. And even though we are only a few days away from the first day of classes, it is not too late to get your course reserves up. Please email reserves at American.edu if you have any questions or course reserve needs. Um, and a part of course reserves is we have our textbook purchasing program. The library is committed to equitable access to course materials whenever possible. Um, and part of that is through keeping costs down through purchasing copies of required course texts, either in electronic or physical format. Um, again, this is very easy to do. Our default policy is to purchase a copy of any full title that is asked for, uh, for course reserves. Um, and again, that is just to help keep costs down for everyone's students. Uh, interlibrary loan, this is connecting you and your students to research and class materials from libraries across the globe. It could be everywhere from Library of Congress here in DC, to the British Library, to libraries in Taiwan, etc. We go far and wide to get the materials that you need. And uh, important to note that ILL is provided free of charge to all users. So it is something that you can make use of um, at any time. Um, WRLC borrowing privileges. The WRLC is the Washington Research Library Consortium, and it is a grouping of local research libraries here in the DMV. Um, some of our fellow members include George Mason, Georgetown, George Washington, Howard University, etc. Um, you have easy access to their collections. Their materials from their stacks can be sent to our library for pickup and use. And you and your students have the ability to go to those libraries in person to use their uh, their materials in their stacks and in their uh, electronic holdings. Um, the last thing I have here is events and exhibits. Uh, the library regularly hosts various events and exhibits uh, open to all. 
Um, sometimes these are during the day, sometimes these are at night, they're throughout the semester. Some upcoming events that you and your students may want to be aware of. We have syllabi and pi on Tuesday, September 3rd. Come get a slice of pi. And one of our big September events is our absentee ballot days at the library. Your students can come, register to vote, get stuff that they need for their absentee ballot. And that is happening the week of September 16th. We had great success with our previous uh, ballot day events at the library. Okay, next I'm just going to review some library services that are maybe more specific to your students or you'd want your students to be uh, aware of. Uh, library instruction and workshops. Some of those events I was mentioning are actual workshops we host at the library. They may be um, instruction on various ways to do research. Sometimes they're about videography. They could be photography, how to use various AV equipment. The library does offer a variety of instruction workshops and any of those events are listed on our website. Um, we have Canvas tutorials and assistance for students. So maybe you have students who are new to Canvas, haven't used a learning management uh, platform before. Um, they can go to the library website and access a whole list of how-to guides on how to interact with Canvas, how to complete quizzes, assignments, uh, message their faculty members, etc. We have research consultations. So your students can schedule one-on-one -on -one consultations with librarians, either in person or via Zoom for general research assistance. Um, also, they can connect with subject specialists. So if they're doing advanced research that is uh, specific to a, a very niche topic or a subject area, they can reach out to science, SIS, et cetera, whatever they may be, uh, they need. And our last service where I'm talking about briefly is our new developing student book clubs. This is just one of the many ways the library tries to enrich student life here on campus. Um, this is something that Amelia and Natasha sitting our audience piloted last semester and they're expanding this year. We're pretty excited and this is just one of the many ways uh, the library tries to uh, make student life a little bit more fun here at AU. And lastly, I'm just going to cover some library services that may be more specific to you all as faculty and staff. We have library instruction planning so you can work with librarians to set up um, instruction sessions in your classes on things such as information literacy, uh, particular research or class projects you're doing, um, and they, the librarians can work with you to tailor that instruction to whatever assignment or need you have with your class. Um, just like we have Canvas support for students, we also have Canvas support for faculty, um, and that support is pretty extensive. Not only does that include how-to guides, but you can meet with instructional designers that are assigned to schools. You can talk to someone in the Canvas office. And those guides are really useful. They'll show you how to set up your class, how to get your assignments into it, etc. cetera. Um, and we also have uh, the instructional tool design. Um, so if you already have the course content you know you want to teach, but you need help figuring out how to get that presented in Canvas, you can reach out to an instructional designer. And there are instructional designers assigned to every school here at AU. Great. Now we get to the physical materials that we have and the digital materials that we have. And you probably already guessed that we have books, like most libraries. But we also have a lot of other collections that I think are really important to highlight for your own use or to communicate. We're open to the, the community. So these are resources that could be used by faculty and staff and students, but also researchers visiting from other campuses. Um, if you haven't been down to the Spring Valley building, the archives and special collections are there and we have, we're getting new materials all the time. We include things like the Peace Corps, uh, the history of the university, uh, primary source materials there. Also, Audra is our digital research archive, which is an online resource. It includes a lot of materials like visual imagery, writing, things like that. I mentioned the board games collection, and that's one of my personal favorites, even though I haven't checked any of the games out. But you can check out pretty much any game that you've heard of, including Wingspan, which if you're into birding, might be a fun thing to try. Um, our Curriculum Materials Center is really a set of materials that are designed for people who are going into education. So it's about the K through 12 world, but it's also curriculum materials that are related to just instruction in general. Uh, if you have time for popular reading or leisure reading, we have a whole collection 
of things, maybe you just need to take a break from whatever it is that you're reading or your students are tired of reading about chemistry and they need a, a something else. The popular reading collection is really great. You can see one of our displays up here was uh, a bunch of different types of materials that we have. So we always have a highlighted section and then a material selection. Uh, we also have a great selection of recordings and videos and musical scores in the musical library. Uh, Nobuo Matsuka, our music librarian, is a performer. She's also been curating collections on the DC punk scene and uh, the go-go scene. So if you're not sure what go-go music is, go check that out at the music library. Uh, there's a new resource that we that I just learned about called Pronunciator, which helps you learn languages. So you may have heard. database yeah. online. Yes. So like you've best. used it before. I hype it up all the time. Yeah. So if you're not sure what it is, like me, go check it out. Try it out. If you're going on a trip because you just learned a new language with Pronunciator, <laughs> um, we have travel books that you can check out. We also have a huge visual media collection, and a lot of that is down at the lower level. So videos, uh, CDs, we have materials that you can check out to, to use that material. Uh, if there's something that we're missing from our collection, please let us know. And then when we look at things that are more specifically for students, we have things like laptop and technology loans. So we you have to reserve these in advance, but if a student needs a laptop, we wanna make sure that we improve accessibility by allowing people to come in and check out laptops for the semester. We also have things like calculators and different types of technology. There's a whole list when you walk into the circulation desk. And then we have some online tutorials like Credo Instruct. We've talked a little bit about information literacy today and some of the, the skills that we talk about as librarians are available in short modules. So you can assign those to your students or they can discover them on their own and kind of work their way and get different credentials that way. If they're writing materials for their theses or dissertations, we have both the theses and dissertations, including some on microfiche and microfilm, all of the ones written by people from AU, so they can get an idea of what that might look like. But then we have access to dissertations and theses through ProQuest that are written by people outside of the university. Uh, and students get a six week borrowing period, which is pretty good, and they can renew things multiple times, it's easy to do that online. And then when we're looking at the differences between students and faculty and staff, obviously faculty and staff have access to all the things that other people do, but you might wanna take a look at our AI report. Our session that we just did was about artificial intelligence and we found some really interesting things out about artificial intelligence and the information landscape. That's in Aura, which is our AU research archive, which contains materials that have been published by people here at AU. This is something that you might use in your own research. You could also encourage students to take a look at it. It's open access, which means that it's available. It also means that if you put your materials in there, you're gonna get more citations. Uh, we mentioned the Credo Instruct tutorials, and faculty and staff have between six weeks to four months to for their borrowing period. So it's a little bit longer, depending on when you check things out. But same thing applies. You can easily renew things online. All right. So now we want you to share your ideas or questions or suggestions for how you think we should improve the library or things that you like about the library. So if you have your phone, you can use this QR code and it should open up the Padlet. Has anybody used Padlet before? A few people. Anybody in our Zoom? 
it's, I'm going to switch over to the Padlet screen so that we can take a look here. Basically, it's a free um, platform where people can interact anonymously. You can also log in if you want to. All you have to do is click this little plus in the corner and then a little box pops up and you can put your suggestions in there. We had some from our earlier session. And so they were talking about writing centers for faculty members. We, we often send our students to the writing center, but I think this is a really great idea for we're all writing, whatever it might be. Sometimes it's helpful to have a faculty writing group. So these are some suggestions that we can take back to the library and talk about. Maybe we need to have some drop-in sessions so you can check in on like how you're doing on your scholarship or on different writing. Um, there's also this one about the different resources that we can hand out to people. Does anybody else think that's a good idea or would you would you put that in your office? <laughs> yeah? On a door, sure. <laughs> Meredith, yeah. Did you have a suggestion or something that you wanted to add? Uh, no, sorry, just um, uh, reacting to the reactions. Sorry. <laughs> I think we should give the librarians more vacation time. All right. We could add that up here if we wanted to. Um, we are here. We're 12 month staff and faculty. And so librarians are here all year round unless we're on vacation. So come in and see us. If you don't have any suggestions, let's see if I I don't have a suggestion, but I just uh, maybe at the beginning should have added that like, I really love that the library is so collaborative. But you seem to affirmatively want to work with everybody on campus, really. Um, I'm staff, I'm you know, one of the career centers on campus. Yeah. And it's not sort of uh, immediately like natural, like, how would you think about this? But we've done so much with you all. Really appreciate it. I seem to see the same thing with, uh, you know, with other members of the other parts of the community. I mean, we love collaborating. Part of why I became a librarian. That's pretty clear. Yeah. I like to share information. <laughs> you all are doing really great stuff too. That's good. Not a plant. Not a plant. We didn't pay you to say that. <laughs> Uncompensated endorsement. <laughs> Uncompensated endorsement. <laughs> well, if you have any other questions, um, you can check out our library homepage. I actually have it up here if you want to take a look. It just got redesigned. So we have a new layout. There are these tabs up across the top that take you to our databases. If you can't find something, let us know. It's always good to get feedback about that. All the things that we mentioned, you can find on this page. Um, but yeah, we like to collaborate. And so you can, we have 24 seven chat with Ask a Librarian. I like to say, I'm not answering your question at two in the morning, but a real librarian is answering. A real human. A real human, maybe they're in the UK, maybe they're in Australia. Somewhere in the world, a real library is helping you. So get in touch with us. All right. Thank you. Any other Thank questions? You. I'd love to get a board games collection. <laughs> they, it's a good collection. They put a lot of effort in this year over the summer acquisitions to highlight games that were fast to learn and fast to play. So they're like a lot more icebreaker style. Yeah games so really recommend whether it's a class sending you know coming grabbing some for icebreakers in class having recommending to your students teaching assistants whatever it may be there's a lot more easy to learn quick games you can do in less than a half hour so you're not an ra would like that yeah but you know, know an ra we have some of those massive board games if you want to spend a whole weekend learning to play a game and then playing it if you're a diehard board gamer but otherwise those those quick games are, are really good i just requested one that's one of my favorite games. It's like that. It's called Choose One. 
and you can play with up to 10 people and you can be playing and another person can like join your game in the middle of it and it helps you kind of learn things about the other person so you would get get five cards and i would put down a card with a purple square and a white square with two different words on it and everybody who's at the table had to guess whether i liked brownies or chocolate chip cookies and you, like everybody guesses and then depending on whether or not people got it right or nobody got it right or everybody got it right you get different amounts of points just like a really fun way to kind of start a conversation yeah. maybe you like both maybe it's a false bind it is it is a false binary <laughs> yes it's a yes and situation exactly. and then there's another conversation that you can have about that. so hey. i saw your hand up uh, for how long do you rent uh, board games and movies? So it's gonna so board games is an easier answer because it's seven days. So at least that's what I think it is. It's yeah. seven days, yeah. Okay. And that's it used to be shorter, but they extended it, which is great. Um, a quick tip is that if you check out a board game like right before like an extended university break, say Thanksgiving or whatever, that they extend your board game time. If you're in town for Thanksgiving, grab some board games. For uh, movies, a lot of them, I want to start by saying check out our streaming video collection. Yeah. You can search that right through the search box on the homepage. We have over 40 streaming video databases. Uh, and a lot of what you're looking for may actually be streaming at this point in time. And like that might be through Canopy or a different database. And you're not going to set up an account. You're just going to watch it right on the library webpage. Um, but we also have thousands of DVDs. I think AU Library has the most extensive um, physical media collection of any of the local research libraries in the area. Um, a lot of our, what we call home use, meaning you can take them home, that's seven days again. There are some stuff that maybe a faculty member has set aside for a class, and that would be a much more limited thing, but that the vast majority is going to be seven days again. On them. Thank you. Yeah. If we have a, like a resource that we want to suggest to the library for acquisition, sure. how do you do that? Like, that's a good question. Yeah, it's, uh, yep. Uh, should we under services? The whole, the new organization makes oh, it. No. Uh, online forms, right there. Yeah. Yep. And then there's going to be two purchase options. I'm pointing at the screen for those who are online. Um, there's a purchase for books and ebooks, and then all others. And that's because they go through two different acquisition processes. So they use two different forms, but, um, we're very big into wanting to know what you all want and then doing our best to get it, so. So on the back end, once you suggest something, it goes to the relevant librarian. So I cover all the science stuff. So if you asked for a science book, right. I would get that request and then I would try and purchase it or figure out some way to get it. And what, I don't know if there's one answer to this, but like, what is the, like, is there a time when you might say no? And also, how long would it yeah. take for if the answer was yes for the resource to be available? Like, how much lead time, I guess, do you need? It varies. It depends, yeah, it which is the hardest answers. answer. Yeah. There are reasons I would say no to something. We have a collection development policy, which is somewhere on the list. So if it doesn't meet, fit with it, it yeah. doesn't fit the collection, that's a good reason. If you ask me to buy a book that's $5,000, maybe not. Um, but other things to keep in mind, the length of time it takes. The course reserves, they can buy textbooks really quickly. My process takes longer, and it depends on if you need a physical book or an ebook. Because ebooks we can turn on turn on a lot faster than getting a physical copy and making it ready to go on the shelf and then checking it out to you. Okay. Yeah. You. Yeah. We, I'm working with a faculty member and we're getting books from a publisher only in Russia. Mm -hmm. And that has turned into like an epically long, Joseph mm -hmm. Turini in the SIS. And that's turned into an epically long process. Like you have to just know that that's going to take you all, right. all year to wait on. Yeah. So. If it's sold in Barnes and Noble, it's probably Fats. easier for me yeah. to get to you. Yeah. 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 We have to get it from Alaska. Right. It might be a problem. Those are great questions. Yeah, they are. Oh, yeah. All right, so a quick question. Please. Um, first of all, thank you all. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, very much. Yeah. <laughs> um, my question was about, like, information flow. So, like, with students, like, you know, I know just for me personally, I want them to engage with 
whatever and all the resources. So like um, when like let's say it, like I've noticed that there have been some trial collections, yes. you know, that have sort of come up, and some of it it was pretty historical. That you know, I mean, I, I'm an SAS student, but I'm really interested in kind of some like colonial stuff uh, is being tested out. Is there um, I don't know, like a single place we can kind of like, and same with events, a single place we can kind of go like here are new resources, here are things we're trying out because if if we try stuff out, that, then it's like, oh, like, let's get that because people are interested. How do we know sort of what's new? Uh, so is it just going to be here or is there like a specific? Well, there's a specific. Does this sort of make sense when I'm asking? Yes, yes. yes. totally. Yes. yes. So there's a specific spot to find the new and trial databases. That's going to be on our A to Z database list. Yeah. So scroll First, up. Look at some of the, the things we have on our home page. But if we go to the databases, Go to the ADC list. And then there just on scroll the right down. Side, yeah. right? I can't see me. You're doing great. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Here we go. There we go. Yeah. There's only a couple of them. We have a few. But also, in theory, as your librarian, I should be sending you. Updates. I've been trying to reach out to people who have specific interests when we do a trial because there are so many faculty members in SIS. Um, so this is a good place to check, but also check with us. Sure. And Shonda, have you met Shonda? Just email because I teach 206. So yeah. Mm -hmm. classes. Shonda and I are. Um, the team for SIS, and then Olivia, Ivy, and I are the team for SBA. So we have a whole bunch of libraries. So, yeah. Yes, definitely just to add, like, if they have, like, a database trial feedback form, if you like the database, fill it out so the librarian who's managing the trial is aware that you used it, you like it, you want to see it added to the collection. And this is also part of that process. Like, there was a... There's actually a database, a subscription that um, one of the SIS professors wanted to add recently, and we are having a little trouble with the publisher office of library terms. And so it took some time for us to kind of figure out a contract that worked. So sometimes it's fast. If it's from Barnes and Noble, sometimes there's contract negotiation that has to happen. We yeah, might actually... <laughs> But yeah, when in doubt, send us an email or fill out the request form and we might say yes. Usually, mm -hmm. usually. usually. we try hard to say yes. yes. Yeah. We try really hard to say yes. I've been working on getting a book for a faculty member for like two and a half years. Really? Yeah, the That's... publisher won't send me sell me just one title. No. I know. They want you to buy all of them. They want us to buy like ten thousand dollars worth of books, not just a thousand dollars worth of books. See, there's all tricky things. Yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, but every publisher is different. <laughs> Are there any questions from our Zoom participants? Can you see the chat? Let's see the chat. Oh, wait. Go, go for it. Yeah. Okay. question about the book club. Uh, when do they meet or when they're going to start meeting? That's a wonderful question. So <laughs> we just piloted the book club back in the spring with some of our student employees. They're called like the Library Student Advisory Council. So they give us a lot of feedback and suggestions on like ways to make it more accessible to you all. So we're currently like meeting with some different people in offices and trying to get that on the ground running. But our hope is to like really do it this fall. And, you know, having it, even though we will be like facilitating it, we want it to be led by students. So you all would like pick the books and maybe facilitate those conversations as well. And we just want to like hang out with y'all and read books too. So <laughs> keep, keep a look out from Follow the library's Instagram. Yes. Yeah. The social media will tell you. Yeah. Yes. Do you have any ideas for books? There's there's a lot of interests of people like the 
questions, suggestions? Oh, right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I will say if you ever want to talk about books, just come down to the lower level <laughs> and find the library. Most of us can read. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I can't. Well, these have been great questions. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hope you learned something new about Board life. Working. Working. One week. Tell everybody that you know. Check out the newspapers too. Oh yeah, yeah. newspapers are neat. <laughs> <laughs>